guys, so you're thinking about building a quadcopter for yourself or for business. Uh, this video is about the parts that you're going to need and their functions. So you have a little bit of a education as far as how to build it and what it's supposed to do. hope that made sense, so here we go. So first thing that you're going to need is a frame. This one is called a quadcopter. It's a quad, that means it has four motors. There's also different frames out there. You can do a uh, tricopter, that means it has three motors. Hexacopter has six motors. Uh, octocopter has eight motors, so on and so forth. But this one's a quadcopter. There's different types of frames out there. Um, you just got to do your research as far as what you need. But this one's your basic quadcopter frame. It has four arms, four motors. And... If you can see here, right there, it has vibration dampeners. That way, the vibration from the motor doesn't translate onto the main frame itself that affects your flight controller. And it might show up in your camera. Now, what you're going to need next is a motor. The size of motor you're going to need depends on the size of quad that you're making. Uh, the bigger the quad, obviously the bigger, the uh, more powerful the motor you're going to need. But this one I have a Multimate MT2814 750kV motor on this quad. The 2814 is the size of the motor. The 750kV is how much power, how much spin it's going to produce or how fast it's going to spin depending on your battery. And another note as far as motors go this is a brushless motor and as you can see it has three wires coming out of it that connects to your ESC which is right here now this motor is going to spin one way or the other depending on how you connect these three wires to the ESC if you if you switch to the wires then it's going to spin one way if you switch it again it's going to spin the other way now this motor is rated for a 4S or 4 cell battery. That means you have to have a 14.8 volt battery for this motor to properly work and lift the quadcopter that I have it on. There's different types of motors out there. Um, some motors run on 3 cells, some run on 4 cell like this one, and others run on higher cell batteries, basically higher voltage. Now you're going to need an ESC. On this one I have a 40 amp 4 cell or 4S speed controller. Uh, the controller basically what it does is whenever you bump the throttle up it's going to tell your motor to spin faster. So it just controls the speed of the motor and that's it. Now there's different types of uh, speed controller out there, different powers, different amps. Um, you'd have to choose the one that suits your quadcopter best. Again, the bigger the quadcopter, you're going to need a larger ESC, maybe a higher amperage. Um, like I said, this one is a 40 amp ESC and it's running on a 4 cell or 4S battery. Uh, the same as my motor, which runs on a 4S battery. The next part are props. Uh, this one is specifically made for multi-rotors. That's why you can see the MR right there. And this is a 10 inch by 4.5 pitch propeller. And I've marked it as uh, FR, meaning front right. Because these motors are only designed to spin one way. If they spin the other uh, direction, that means that your quad is not going to fly and most likely will flip over. So make sure that you have your motor spinning in the right direction and you have the correct prop spinning in the right direction on here and um, they have different sizes of props out there it all depends on the size of motor you have the esc and the battery that you're running it on they all pretty much tie in together as far as you know the efficiency and whether it's going to work with each other or not when you're choosing your props, you have to figure out how you want to fly the quadcopter, whether you want to fly it fast or you want to fly it for a very long time, meaning you're going for endurance versus speed. If you're going for speed, you're going to want props that are a little bit smaller with a larger pitch diameter. 
and that means the the steeper the pitch of the prop the faster it's going to fly forward but if you're going for something that's an endurance squad meaning that you want it to fly and stay in the air for the longest time possible then what you're going to want is a larger prop lengthwise and less pitch that means it's going to run as efficiently as possible for you and you're going to get the most out of your battery so you're going to need a flight controller what the flight controller does basically is the brain of your quadcopter it makes sure that the motors and the props are spinning at the right speed so that your quad doesn't flip over uh, there's cheap flight controllers out there that it just comes with a flight controller and basically nothing else it just keeps your quadcopter leveled and the more you spend it'll come with more and better feature for example this is a DJI NASA version 2 and as you can see here it has a little GPS puck so this has a return to home just in case you fly out of range or it has GPS hold some of them you can even add uh, waypoints and everything else but this is the GPS this the flight controller itself is this little brick right here with the little duct tape um, here's another flight controller right here okay that's what it basically looks like this type anyway there's different versions out there that look different but that's what a flight controller does it basically it's the brain for your whole rig um, it, it has different modes depending on how much you spend um, you have you're gonna have stabilized mode uh, manual mode uh, GPS return to home so on and so forth so this is the flight battery this basically powers the whole quadcopter and this makes sure that all the electronics the motors the ESC or cameras and transmitters and everything else that's on there gets powered by this some setup you need or some other builds they use two batteries one to power the quadcopter another one to power everything else but I like to keep it simple and I want to power everything with just one battery so I don't have to worry about making sure two batteries are charged. This way I only have uh, one battery to charge to make sure that you know it's all working properly. So as I've said, this is a four cell battery as you can see right there. That one's highlighted and it's 14.8 volts. Now I that's the resting volts, meaning when you're storing it, that's the volts that you want to keep it in. If it's fully charged, it's gonna go higher than that and this is the lead that plugs into your quadcopter this is called the balance lead meaning when you're charging this back up you want to make sure you're charging or recharging it uh, balance charging it that way all the cells in the battery is evenly charged you don't want one cell higher than the rest or lower because when you go fly if one of those cells are lower, chances are your quadcopter is going to crash because your battery is going to burn out or give up. So, again, this is a four cell battery. So, this is a 5000 milliamp four cell battery. It says 5.0 right there, meaning that's 5 amp. There's 1000 milliamps per amp, so that's 5000 milliamp or 5 amps. It'll say one you know one way or the other it doesn't matter and it's a four cell battery um, the larger the capacity meaning the higher the milliamps or amps the larger the battery is going to be or the higher the cell rating meaning if you have 4s 6s and up the larger the battery is going to be and the heavier it's going to be so so those are the two things that you need to keep an eye on and also the discharge this is 25 to 35 C discharge you want to stay if you're doing regular flying or, or maybe a little bit of a um, fast flying uh, you want to stay around this discharge because the lower the discharge is um, it becomes unsafe for example if you're flying your quadcopter and automatically you punch the throttle all the way up if the discharge rate of your battery is too low that means it can't pump enough juice to the motors so that it'll spin up as fast as you can and you can fly high and fast 
and also if you go the other way if the discharge rate is too high but you don't really need that much power right away out of your battery then you're just wasting your money and you're adding weight to the battery that's not necessary again it's all about efficiency when you're building a quadcopter because these things they suck power out of your battery last you're gonna need a way to be able to control your quadcopter and what you need is a radio uh, that comes in two parts the part that's gonna go on your quadcopter is the radio receiver okay that's this box black box thing right here and these are the antennas another one here another one there some come with one antennas the better and more expensive version come with diversity antennas basically two antennas that way when your quadcopter turns left or right banks left or right you're always going to have one at least pointing up so you get the best reception possible and depending on how much you pay for your radio usually it comes in sets you have the radio itself and the receiver that goes in your quadcopter cheaper versions you don't get as much function out of it um, if you want to be able to utilize say for example a fail safe function or you want to have more channels so you can do more with your quadcopter you're going to want to buy something that's a little bit more expensive of a radio so you can get those functions for example this one it has a fail safe uh, function on this receiver meaning that if this quadcopter flies out of range of my radio it doesn't keep on flying and I'm gonna lose the whole rig it's actually gonna kick into fail safe and what's gonna happen is my flight controller the GPS and this thing down here it's it has the recorded position of where I started and what it's gonna do once the fail safe function kicks in is this will take over along with this and this whole rig is gonna fly back to where I'm at instead of losing it well that's it guys if you have any questions leave it down below like and subscribe bye